for any any machine learning use case. And yeah, what kind of statistics uh, well, we we can uh, profile from the training data? Just don't try to read this. I uh, just uh, I will I will uh, was tough. So uh, any statistics you know? Histograms, means, <coughs> max, uh, skewness, uh, uh, everything from the data. Uh, Pandas data profile package that you that you that you probably used uh, many times if you're data scientist. But uh, basically, what you we can see that out of the uh, data we can generate uh, 10, 20 uh, statistics that uh, des describe the, the data we have. And basically, tracking the difference between training and production data might take us. Uh, give us a, a lot of insights. You see that in this case, the histogram, uh, that this is the one that you can uh, barely see in, uh, on the screen, in production is different. It means that, okay, we need a, we, we have a signal for our model, for data scientists, or for our like uh, automation pipeline, to take a look and uh, maybe <coughs> to see what's going wrong with our uh, data pipeline, or our concept is really changed in production, and we, we need to retrain the model with that new population. So, uh, there is a problem here. Uh, yeah, basically, this can work for a classical machine learning use case when you can do, when you have an input of just a, a plain feature vectors, and uh, that's it. If we have 100 features, and every feature generates uh, 20 profile metrics, we have 2,000, uh, metrics and points to to track on every input request. So uh, the, uh, the the data uh, volume is increasing like uh, uh, dramatically, and uh, it doesn't make sense for people even to watch those two two thousand metrics on the screen. So you, because you could not uh, in, to watch and and compare for every feature you have because so uh, it's too much. So, uh, in general, what's, uh, well, what we can do, we can apply some Kolmogorov Smirnov test, just some more, a little bit advanced statistical techniques for PCA, QQ plot, uh, so draw that quantile, and a little bit, and reduce this dimensionality and reduce this, uh, the amount of the, 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 the points we track uh, to, to make a decision out of it. So, it's uh, in general. Uh, and again, this is uh, the simplest use case when you have just a, a plain feature vector that you pass like client profile, for example, or something like that. What to do with images? The shape of the input, <coughs> input images are uh, 300, 300, and, uh, uh, and, and three. It's uh, a high, high, high dimensional uh, input. Uh, it's, it doesn't make sense to track every pixel. You see, it's uh, the, the track the, the statistics of every pixel you pass to, to, to the model. So it's uh, uh, and but we anyhow we need to uh, uh, to measure and to to uh, to, to predict uh, the probability of particular picture picture image to be uh, uh, to be aligned to be uh, mapped to the certain uh, class or uh, to the certain concept. So uh, that's uh, that's the actual change. Uh, when we start, like uh, when we start talking about images and auto and uh, analyzing those images and analyzing outliers in the images, the, the first the first thing then the first obvious uh, model that comes into our mind is the uh, auto -import. I guess, uh, who, who is aware what our voting order is? So, it's, uh, I would explain very quickly, it's uh, super simple. So you have an input uh, input image, uh, you have an encoder that basically, who knows statistics, it's, you can treat it as a more powerful PCA, more powerful principal component than analysis. So, uh, that deals with multi-dimensional uh, multi-dimensionality and, and all that stuff. It basically reduces the uh, the 
the input features to be some intermediate representation uh, of, of that image, and then decoder tries to reconstruct uh, the image from that original, that uh, intermediate representation. And basically, it uh, and it, it's being trained as a, a decoder is to be trained uh, to minimize the root square error between original image and the resulted image. So bas basically, the in the in the middle of that uh, of, of this like that intermediate representation or latent space, uh, or, or, which is called latent space, is a uh, is a statistical snapshot of the uh, is a snapshot of the statistical properties of our input image. So we basically did a uh, feature engineering automatically on the fly and extracted most uh, like most valuable features out, out of our image. Yeah, and uh, actually reconstruction uh, reconstruction error, error is a level of anomaly. If our autoencoder that has been trained on our training data have never seen a particular image, the it will not be able to reconstruct it properly. That's why uh, the 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 reconstruction error will be high, and we can say, okay, this is kind of the image that we have never seen. That's good enough, but there is a problem. We can't estimate the a probability of distribution of x. x is, uh, uh, yeah, this input. So uh, we can say, okay, it's anomaly, but we can't, uh, like, explain why it's, uh, why, uh, it's an anomaly. Can, we can interpret this and we can compare different uh, different distributions from training and, uh, and production. So uh, this, uh, this is an issue. Uh, the, there is another approach of, for, for, for generating for models. Have you, have you guys uh, uh, seen and uh, heard anything about GANs? Generated adversarial networks? I guess it's a famous, famous uh, uh, blog post and famous paper that uh, we've, uh, we've all seen that we can add a, a random noise uh, <coughs> to the images and actually fool our end-to-end uh, -end, uh, image recognition model and make, for example, uh, it recognize toaster instead of sport car. Yeah, so we basically we uh, we add an adversarial noise to fool our uh, our model, and the idea here is just generator can compete with discriminator, uh, uh, so they both uh, become the dis generator learns how to generate the noise that he will uh, fool the discriminator better, and discriminator will learns how to. Uh, classify fake from real. Yeah, and actually we can use the same uh, the same approach, the same generative adversarial networks to learn that blank space. What the, what actually generator is trying to do is to hit into that blank space between between classes, and he is trying to learn that uh, like uh, uncertainty. And this is great. And once we train that, we can use this as as yet another approach to detect anomaly in production. So we have a production input and the discriminator just outputs either it's drift uh, or outlier or a good <coughs> expected uh, uh, image we have in the, uh, we have trained. So, so you plan to apply this to self-driving cars? Is that yeah, the yeah, so that I'm just trying to like uh, the the uh, the that technology behind us. It's good, uh, and again, it's just a classification, fake or real, or uh, drift or not drift. We don't have uh, uh, explicit <coughs> insights on actual probability distribution of the latent space. So that uh, random noise generator is basically what we are trying to, uh, uh, to analyze. And it's just uh, it's not analyzable because there is no encoder. Uh, there is one step further. There are there are variational autoencoders. It's uh, 
I'm not gonna bother you with the details. Uh, for this talk, what you uh, what you need to know that it puts just the one uh, small uh, simple constraint on a original autoencoder and makes this uh, latent space to represent the probability distribution of the input uh, input images. And uh, basically, we know that though that that statistics statistics <coughs> about the and population of the input data that we used for training, and we can apply the same, extract the same latent space from the pro, from the production data. There are also uh, another research, <coughs> another approach is for uh, masked autoencoder for density estimation. It's uh, so-called MADE. Uh, it uses autoregression property of the. Uh, uh, it introduces autoregression property into autoencoders to model this, uh, to estimate this uh, probability distribution. So uh, the, this is uh, very good. And there are an, a, a lot of uh, like ongoing research as a glow model, gen also generative, uh, uh, generative model from open AI uh, research, <coughs> bidirectional ga GANs, likelihood estimation of GANs. So, it's uh, like uh, a dozen, a dozen of uh, like uh, papers, even du during the last year, has been published on that. And uh, at the end of the day, what we we are trying to see that you see it's our training data set and our production data set, and we have a difference with, 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 with between them. And once we have this. We can put it. In a, we can like automate the process around it. So we learn the latent space online in a stream of uh, production inputs. We compare the snapshots of the uh, of the production uh, data with our training data. We we get that difference, and we and we can retrain our models with the with the new distribution. So uh, for the uh, online monitoring and profiling uh, in infrastructure, it's uh, on a high level, it looks like this. So we have a model, our end-to-end -end model, uh, that, for example, that just image, image detection, uh, object detection model. Uh, it has inputs, it has outputs, uh, and it's like orthogonal flow uh, asynchronous orthogonal flow when we analyze the inputs and outputs of the, Im the that images uh, in a stream and what we need, we need to uh, learn this probability distribution out of it. So, uh, and this will give us a monitoring alerts, this will give us uh, some insights and statistics and uh, all the like tooling and infrastructure that is, uh, is to be used for by machine learning engineer, by data scientist, by by basically operator of these uh, models for self-driving cars. And once uh, let's talk a little bit about like training and labeling. So in, in general, labeling is expensive, and uh, training is expensive as well, especially on a self-driving car scale. Uh, yeah. Uh, 300 years of driving, you will never retrain your model uh, from scratch on this uh, this amount of data. And also, labeling is useless when done on wrong data. Yeah, it's it's, it's obvious. And uh, retraining is also u useless and not safe. You can you can introduce the the error uh, on a on a certain stage into your model that will be propagated from training to serving the serving time. So it's a uh, uh, and then the the approach we use we we have this probability distribution of our production data, and we can we can subsample by using like stratified sampling or other other techniques that just uh, builds us the same population of a training data and labeling data as we've seen in production so far. And uh, in a previous talk, if you if you heard, okay. Uh, the previous speaker well, had, had a point that less less data uh, sometimes is better than having 
big data, and this is exactly the uh, the case. When we have, we might have, we can generate less data, but more diversified, uh, more clean, to to optimize our labeling cost, training cost, and basically to move uh, to iterate quickly. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, a few uh, takeaways uh, uh, of this talk I want to share. Uh, tracking the boundaries of the inference phase of self-driving car models in production is the key for discovering new and uncertain concepts. So, uh, when we are in production, the, the monitoring is a key. Uh, monitoring of the inference space of the image stream is an open research. Uh, actually, we, we, we will be able to release it by the end of this year, but in general, the papers I showed to you, the, they barely work on the NIST data set. So it's uh, very, very hard for stuff. It's a bleeding edge, and uh, uh, sometimes you, 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 there are, you even argue with those papers because they just don't work, they don't have like a mathematical, uh, they don't coincide with, uh, in, like, with not, not true mathematically. And also the deploying this at scale, basically if you can imagine, we need to train online our monitoring models as new data, data arrives. We can't train them in batch because if we just if we are lagging behind, you you will never be able to ramp up with uh, with the data you lost you you know you you uh, during like idle time. So and training auto encoders uh, online is also a very very tricky. Even even tra even counting if you if you imagine just counting a uh, uh, calculating a histogram in a stream not in a batch it's it's very tricky you uh, you need to use some some sophisti sophisticated uh, data structures to do that so but and counting like uh, training auto encoders and not just one auto encoder different uh, different types of auto encoders maybe connected to uh, in a certain like ensemble is is uh, a hardcore engineering yeah, and training label and labeling uh, data should map at, uh, at distribution of the wolf data you've seen so far to optimize the cost of and accuracy of your model. Uh, the, the, this is, that's it, what, what I have today. I have to take questions. Mm -hmm. um, so you showed a much different method you can use like uh, PC or the yeah. or whatever. So what is your <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what what uh, what uh, what is uh, we will we are using basically right now two main two main the most promising uh, methods is uh, Glow, Glow that has been it's a it's a flow based generative net networks from uh, for that has been released uh, by OpenAI and combination of variational auto encoder. Actually, there is uh, I just have. Have a, didn't have a chance to go so deep. There is a conditional variational auto encoder when you can manipulate this latent space with some labeled features. For example, you can say you can add new features, labeled features there. So, uh, conditional variational auto encoder uh, combined with uh, generated adversarial network. So it's uh, uh, actually the uh, inter interesting thing that. In general, those uh, architectures have been developed for image generation. So uh, the main use case is that you can generate uh, images that are that look the same as real ones. And we use those uh, models just for a little bit different mm. purpose for learning that latent space and for the learning that distribution. Not sure I answered your question. Well, so I, uh, answer question yeah, uh, there, there, uh, there are two favorites, uh, oh. maybe three favorites, yeah. uh, and uh, basically we there, there won't be just one uh, silver bullet. And what we have, we just monitor. Uh, we 
we stack them all together mm -hmm. and uh, monitor, monitor in parallel. So a simple question. Will your technology be applied uh, while the car is in operation or for simulation of the car? For training the car before, before it gets on the road? There is no that uh, point in time when you have uh, a training and now you have uh, a, a, a production because it's uh, it's continuous because process. So that means as the car is driving, it's training itself and then improving the recognition and all that. And is that uh, so it's basically uh, yeah, it should happen on, on a in a and data center. In a data center. And your yes. model can do that. You can actually keep learning. Yes. As, as yes. Is anyone doing this? Are you working with any car company? So, uh, yeah, I can't disclose this, yeah. uh, but this is uh, this is something that like ongoing research and development for self-driving cars for images. What we have in production right now is a monitoring, uh, like a classic machine learning use case. When you do, no not an image recognition. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when you have a, a simple, not not a simple, just a feature vector. And you need to monitor. So this is a proposed technology. Uh, yeah, if, if you uh, if you are like interested, you can sign up for beta demo. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it's uh, it's a very very open question, and uh, uh, what the way it's being solved right now is uh, very straightforward. You just keep labeling data, and you you, you just keep uh, training and uh, using like Google. Google scale data centers, and uh, probably just Google can uh, uh, can do that at uh, that uh, this time. But uh, if you can if you can think about maybe your AI uh, project and your industry, there are the same issues 